right, looking at 1.5, solving problems involving linear systems. Any of the three methods we've discussed in this course, graphing, substitution, or elimination, can be used to solve a system of equations. And we're going to look at three types of word problems here in this question. The first one, example one, Sam has a total of eight toy cars and trucks. He hopes to double the number of cars he has now. If he does, then he will have a total of 11 toy cars and trucks. How many of each type does he have now? So you know that when we have a word problem, we always start it off with the same two steps. Let x represent and let y represent. So let's start off. What are the two things that we don't know in this question? Well. The two things are toy cars and trucks. So we need to know what, how many of car, how many cars does Sam have now and how many trucks he has now. We know he has a total of eight right now. So let X represent the number of cars and let Y represent the number of trucks. So that's crucial right there. Now, what do we know? We know he has eight of these right now. So x plus y is equal to 8. The next thing we know is that if he doubles the number of cars he has now, he will have a total of 11 toy cars and trucks. So if he just doubles the number of cars, so 2x plus y will equal 11. So these are our two equations that we have here. So let's go through the steps. Label 1 and 2, draw a line to separate the equations, and we're going to play substitution. We isolate y in equation number 1, so we're going to isolate for y. We could isolate for y in equation number 1, or we could isolate for y in equation number 2. The other thing we could isolate for is x in equation number 1. Or we could have used elimination and eliminated the y's by subtracting 1 minus 2. So notice that in this question, there are many ways to approach this question. So one more time again, we could have isolated for x, isolated for y in equation 1, or isolated for y in equation 2. We also could have used elimination and subtracted 1 minus 2 and eliminated the y's or we could have eliminated the x's. Irregardless of which method you choose, you will eventually get to the right answer. This example that I'm showing you is just one example of the different types you could do to get the answer. So we isolate y in 1, and then we sub the in 2, plugged it into 2, expanded, found the value of x, Okay, so one more time again. So we isolated for y in 1. We sub, so that's y equals 8 minus x. We sub that information in 2. So you get 2x plus 8 minus x equals 11. So we get 2x plus 8 minus x equals 11. That means that x is equal to 3. So 2x minus x is x. 11 minus 8 is 3. So x equals 3. We sub that information in equation number 1. So we have equation number 1 is x plus y equals 8. So we subbed in 3 for x. So there should have been brackets around that 3. So let's put it around there. Oops, let's do that again just so that they're there. These little brackets just to sub for the x. Good. Plus y is equal to 8. That means that y is equal to 3. And then now we're going to check. We check the answer 3, 5 in equation number 2, left side, right side, and this is what we get. Therefore, Sam has three cars and five trucks. Now, now the reason you know is look at the question. He has a total of two, eight cars and toy trucks right now. He hopes to double the number of cars he has now. Okay, so he wants to double it, but he hasn't done it yet. He hopes to. So he has now eight cars and, no, and trucks all together. Three of them cars, five of them trucks. Something else to note, folks. Please pay attention 
that you write these steps in, such as isolate, sub, sub, and then a check. And for elimination, you'll see an example with elimination. Please make sure that you follow through with this example. All right, next one. Example two. You took two hours to travel down a 12-kilometer river. The return trip against the current took three hours. What was your average paddling? Oh, sorry, folks. Oh, that was a yawn. Okay, sorry about that. What was your average paddling rate? What was the speed of the current? So what we're looking at here is being able to answer this question. So you can imagine, if you're paddling down river, what you're doing is you're using the current to push you as well as your paddling speed. And you can assume that the paddling speed is constant, is, is constantly the same rate, and you can also assume that the river speed is the same rate the river current. So we're going to let x represent your speed and rep y represent the current speed. And we have a triangle here. What does that triangle represent? Well folks, we're talking about time and speed and distance. Obviously, there should be a distance, speed, and time triangle, where distance is equal to speed times time. So. Based on this information, we could actually figure out the equation that goes with this. What is the total distance traveled? Obviously, 12 kilometers. On the way down the river, how long did it take? Well, it took, let's see, two hours down river. So two hours times a certain speed will equal the distance of 12 kilometers. What is a certain speed that you're traveling? Well, if you're down river, you're paddling, plus you have the current pushing you. So it's x plus the y, x plus the y, to give us times the time equals the current. And that's how we get that first equation, folks. Okay? I just want to push this back a second. So here it is. What we're looking at here is your speed plus the current speed multiplied by the length of time it takes to go down the river, two hours, is equal to 12. So speed times time is equal to 12. Now, for the next one, we have to go against the current. So what's the speed when you go against the current? Well, it's your speed minus the river's current because it's actually pushing you backwards. Your speed minus the reverse current times 3 is equal to 12. Times it by 3 because it took you 3 hours to get back, and that's still a distance of 12 kilometers. So here are your two equations. So what we're going to do is expand equation number 1 and expand equation number 2. The reason we expanded it is so that there's no brackets, and now we can look at that this equation tells us, oh, we better see what we need to use. Ideally, you want to use elimination. The reason why is you have all numbers everywhere. There are no letters almost by itself. And that's the time that you would hint yourself substitution. In this case, we need elimination. So we're going to multiply equation number 3 times 3, equation number 4 times 2. And that's what we're doing. But I want you to look at this next line for a second, okay? Looking at this next line, do you see what I'm seeing here? I could subtract these and I will get 12y is equal to 12. Or I can add these equations, get rid of this, and we'll have 12x is equal to 60. Either way, folks, add or subtract, lucky enough, in this question, it turned out to be that way. It doesn't always turn out that way. In fact, it's less likely that it turns out this way. So we're lucky that this particular equation we can do this way. So what I decided to do was take 5 and add 6. Yes, I know a lot of you are going, but miss, that wasn't my purpose. I get it. But I want you to understand that I took 5 plus 6. I added them. I get 12x is equal to 60. x is equal to 5. 
then I subbed this information in equation number one. And yes, folks, you must use the originals. So you get 5 plus y times 2 is equal to 12. 5 plus y is equal to 6. That means y is equal to 1. We're checking the point 5, 1. Where are we checking it? In equation number 2. And lo and behold, folks, we plug it in and we get left side equals right side. So your speed turns out to be 5 kilometers per hour and the recurrent speed turns out to be 1 kilometer per hour. Again, you might be asking yourself, why 5 kilometers per hour? Well, in the original question, up here, we have that information as the speed. We have the distance in kilometers and the time took us hours. So kilometers per hour is the rate of speed traveled. All right, what we're going to do is stop the video and we're going to move into the second video to watch the last equation, the last word problem. The last problem kind of needs its own video. All right, folks, see you on the other side.